you drop something, Sergeant? This is supposed to be a stealth mission. Why? Ah, never mind. You're here now. I need you to breach that door. Oh, oh, charades! I know this. It's on oh. the tip of my tongue. Hang uh, on, is it, hang is it on. a musical? No, no, it's gotta oh, be, uh, is it, it's a book. No, no. Okay, sign language 101. This means stay low. This means stack up. And this means I'm gonna put your lights out if you don't shut up. Stack up? No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that means one syllable. Ah, just shut up. Breach that door. Okay. Hey guys, Captain Jack here, and welcome to another episode of History and Lore. In part 5 of my Battlefield series, we look at one of the more unique story-driven Battlefield games, Battlefield Bad Company. On June 23rd, 2008, DICE and EA released the fifth title in the Battlefield franchise, Battlefield Bad Company. Bad Company was unique in the series in that it was developed for consoles only, and featured a full single-player story-driven campaign unlike the other Battlefields, which had no story. The player takes control of the main protagonist, Private Preston Marlowe, and follows his exploits to steal gold from mercenaries along with his squad, right in the middle of a war between the United States and the Russian Federation. I hope those are odd guns. It's a beautiful sound either way. It's an apple! Ah, typical! Quit your whining, sweet! It's about time we got some action! Look at the new guy! He's... Oh, look! look. You guys there! Already? Already? I was just about to learn his name. I think it was probably Joe. It usually is. His name is Preston. Preston Marlowe. The game had a focus on squad-based combat, while still retaining the vehicular large-scale warfare of the series in multiplayer. Gameplay retained the basic Battlefield formula, with the addition of highly destructible environments utilizing the new Frostbite engine, which allowed for an estimated 90% of the environment to be destroyed. Things like trees, buildings, grass, bushes, vehicles, and other players, and the very ground itself were all destructible, with some exceptions for the purpose of gameplay. They didn't want the maps to be completely flat after every battle. When wounded, the player can heal themselves with a Life 2 auto-injector. Everyone okay? Never been better! I'm fine. New guy's fine too. Way to go, new guy. Staying alive. Very good start. On the smoke! Regroup! Multiplayer supports up to 24 players. It had a game mode called Gold Rush, which was the only multiplayer mode included in the initial release of Bad Company, where one team had two crates of gold to defend while the other team attempts to destroy the crates. If Team 1 was able to destroy the crates, it would open up more of the map available for fighting and unlocking two new crates. The attacking team has a limited amount of respawns to achieve their goal of capturing the three to five gold stashes, each by setting charges or simply destroying the two crates of gold at each base. The defending team has an unlimited amount of respawns available, but their goal is to exhaust the attacking team's respawns to win. The Conquest game mode that Battlefield is known for was completely absent in the beta version of the game and on the initial release, but because of a strong outcry from the beta players, Conquest Mode was eventually added in a patch after release. The game has 25 ranks, all based on US Army ranks, examples being Corporal, Sergeant, Colonel. With each rank, you unlock credits, which are used to unlock weapons. Much like Battlefield 2142, Bad Company had a reduced soldier class list, with previous classes being combined. The classes that were available were Assault, Demolition, Recon, Specialist, and Support. Bad Company introduced the concept that we know now as the dog tag system, where every knife kill gives you a dog tag. Depending on the rank of the player that you knife, you get an extra bonus amount of experience. The higher the player's rank, the more experience you get. Battlefield Bad Company had an actual plot. Set during a near future war with the Russian Federation in the United States, it follows four squad members from B Company of the 222nd Army Battalion, commonly known as Bad Company, mainly composed of troublemakers who are used on the battlefield as cannon fodder. You are go for Objective Mustang. Over. Could you tell her I said hi? Objective Mustang, affirmative. You play as Private Marlowe, who's the game's main protagonist, and you just transferred to Bravo Company. Private Preston Marlowe reporting for duty, sir. You sure you're in the right place? I believe so, sir. 
Joining Preston is Private Terrence Sweetwater. Mike Juliet, over. Uh, the dulcet tones of Miss July. Mike One Juliet, this is Bravo One Charlie. And Private George Gordon Haggard Jr., who is a pyromaniac and the comic relief of the story. And lastly, there's Sergeant Samuel D. Redford, the leader of the squad. I do have fun, Haggard. Well, yeah. May I ask you why? The gold! Didn't you see it? I mean, Sweetwater can never swallow a piece that big. Just shut it, Hag. Give me one good reason that I should not send your ass to jail. Well, because you love me, Sarge. In a plutonic way. Redford being the only person to ever volunteer for his position to shorten his term of service. At the start of the game, he only has three days remaining before retirement. After joining Bad Company, you embark on your first mission with your new squad. That being seizing a Russian artillery position and turning the guns on advancing enemy armor. Proceeding to knock out several anti-air batteries, clearing the way for advancing armor and taking control of a city of Zadgrad. The group stumbles upon a legionnaire encampment. These are mercenaries whose leader is the ruthless commander legionnaire. The legionaries are possibly the most deadly army in the world, according to Sweetwater who also mention how each is paid in solid gold bars. Transported to the dock farther away from the U.S. Army, they spot more legionnaires loading a supply truck full of gold. Where are they going so fast? The truck ends up driving past the border into nearby Sederistan, a neutral state in the conflict. Haggard, however, excitedly runs after the truck full of gold, single-handedly invading a neutral country. We can't follow them any farther. Where did the hack of gold? There's gold in them little hills! Shh, that's a neutral zone. Hagger, fall back! He can't hear you, Sarge. If he could, he wouldn't listen. I hate to say this, but we have to go and get him back. Do we, I mean, do we really have to go and get him back? I mean, have The squad to? pursues Hagger Move to out. stop him from causing further damage. When they find him, Mission coordinator Mike One Juliet calls Redford, stating that he would be subject to a court martial for Haggard's offense, as well as raising his service time. Seeing as how they have no other choice but to run, Redford suggests they pursue the gold even further to the harbor, and a ship that is loaded with gold. The group fight their way there, only to get caught by U.S. forces. I wanted to say that. Why? Sounds cool. Really shut him up. You shut up. Look around. That arm. Say goodbye to the gold. So, I wonder what Kale's gonna be like. I hear the food's pretty good. Yeah, I got a feeling the food is gonna be the least of my problems. Dropping the soap is what I'm worried about. I hate that. It's all mush in your hands. You can't grab it. Slip You two just shut up. A deal is made that the squad will have their charges drop if they investigate Sir Daristand, since the squad is officially AWOL, removing the US's liability. The squad's orders are to capture the eccentric dictator of Sir Daristand, Zavimir Sirdar. Four puny military. Four puny military. Damn it, Haggard. Four puny military. He's no invasion. He's trespassing. Mike One Juliet, this is Bravo One Charlie. We have the package. Repeat, we have the package. Request immediate extraction. Over. Bravo One Charlie, this is Mike One Juliet. Leave the package. Repeat, leave the package. And you're not going to like this, Sergeant, but extraction is denied. Over. Denied? What do we have to do to get the bird here? Over. I hate to tell you this, boys, but it's not going to happen. We're going for deniability. You're on your own. Over. What do you mean we're on our own? How do we get out? Over. Soon, Sedaristan is considered at war after shooting down the squad's UH-60 Black Hawk transport helicopter, and the group advances to the dictator's palace by the way of his personal golf course, where he tells them that the legionaries had invaded in order to pay his bills. As they attempt to escape, they are informed that the U.S. Army is severing all ties with them and they must find their way out on their own. The squad escapes with Sidar on his golden MI-24 Hind helicopter. Pursued by legionaries. Now, this is state with transportation for VIP. Quite improper for your unhygienic smelly bum bums. But what about the unhygienic decor? I mean, is that a mirror ball? Although I have to confess, a hot tub is a very nice touch. Now, let me see how you fly this. Thing. Hold on. Get out of that seat. No fun. Preston.
Sidar reluctantly directs them to Desteristan's military nexus, where the helicopter is used to destroy an oil refinery and the country's internet service station. After a long flight, the helicopter is shot down by a black Ka-52 helicopter in Russia. Preston wakes up alone, and with the help of Mike One Juliet is reunited with the squad at the monastery. Sadar, however, was captured, and the squad saves him from execution by legionaries. Escaping in a boat, they leave Sirdar on a small isolated island as the exile he was seeking and arrive in Sadiz, a city under construction somewhere in the Caspian Sea. On the beach, the squad spots the ship they saw early in Sedaristan. Advancing past resistance, they learn the U.S. Army is also mounting an offensive there and fear competition for the gold. They then make a deal to share some of the gold with Mike One Juliet in exchange for mission support. After slowing down the U.S. Army's offensive by blowing up two bridges, the squad reaches a gold-filled garage. Oh, no! Look at it! Yeah. Please! It's true. It's true. Tons of gold. I love it. My thoughts exactly. Well, I'll be dead. But is attacked by Legionnaire Leader in his personal KA-52 helicopter, the same one from before. Preston manages to shoot down the Legionnaire and the squad returns to the gold only to find the U.S. Army loading it in the supply trucks. Look, Pursuming defeat, they are drummer. spotted by the commanding officer. Doesn't matter. We blew it. Let's just get out of here before they spot us. Soldiers! What are you waiting for? Sir, uh, uh, we're a group of highly, uh, embedded... Uh... Sir, the area is secure. Just waiting for new orders, sir. Take that truck and follow the convoy. Did, uh, did that truck, sir? Yeah, that truck full of, uh, scrap metal. Move out! Sir, sir yes, sir. sir! Preston convinces him that they are army operatives, and the officer orders them to take a truck and join the convoy. The squad happily obliges, but elopes out of the convoy with a gold-filled truck. Meanwhile, at the KA-52 crash site, the Legionnaire rises from the burning wreckage with a vengeful expression, seemingly unhurt. And that wraps up the story of Battlefield Bad Company. Not the greatest story in the world, but for a franchise that's never had a story before, it was pretty good, and the characters were hilarious. Especially Haggard, he's probably one of my favorite, between him and Sweetwater. Alright, so Battlefield Bad Company was well received by the gaming press. Game Rankings has given it a score of 83% on the Xbox version, praising its realistic, destructible environments, impressive weapons, and a variety of gameplay and vehicles. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Battlefield History and Lore. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at Battlefield Heroes, that really cartoony Battlefield game, and possibly look into Battlefield Bad Company 2, depending on how much time I spend on Battlefield Heroes. Well, if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to TGN for more gaming goodness, or my channel for more modding goodness. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Sarkosaurus Rex, here I come. Grad school, here I come. Woohoo, let's go fishing.